Well, welcome back to my four times of camp fan build, and this episode hopefully going to address some of the questions, or the most asked question I get is where does the bed go, or where is the bed, and which is a fair point because there's literally no evidence of where a bed goes in the van at the minute. Um, it's going to go here. So the main reason the bed isn't built at the moment is so I can have this area as a disposable worktop. So because it's winter, cold, I can have the door shut and the heated on and use this as a worktop. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to build generally for like the UK and British designs quite an unconventional bed design. You see it a little bit more in sort of American designs which is where I got the original idea from and I've slightly adapted it to fit what I want. Effectively it's going to be a fold down bed. So there's going to be folded up position to here. Uh, and then when and then it will fold down all the way from back of these seats all the way to the back door and that gives from here to here about 175 centimeters or width wise 185 centimeters um, about 189 190 centimeters is the actual length of a British bed so it's, a, it's about that much shorter than an actual proper British bed if you slept this way and about that much shorter if you slept that way. I found when I've had a temporary bed in here and I've just put some panels across because I've been using the van for other things so I usually stick a bit diagonal which is about two meters something. So it's a bit of a weird size. It's sort of like a slightly stubby Super King is the sort of final size of the bed. It's got the width of a Super King size bed but it's about five centimeters too short, I think. Generally, big. Um, and that's gonna fold up here. The reason I want to go for this design is I didn't want to go for a garage because I didn't see personally having a need for a garage. I don't have any bikes or anything I want to put in. So it seemed like for me a waste of space to, to do a garage for my occasion. But as this isn't the longest vehicle as well as this is the the L3 I quite like the option to be able to have all the additional space in the van as well plus if I put a garage in it's gonna make the van heavier and if I go much heavier it will probably be over the weight limits so that's the plan but what I'm gonna do opposed to be one big massive panel along here I'm gonna celebrate it into three different panels um, so if I have people in the van I can have maybe the back two panels down and the, the mattress out on those back two panels and have that as sort of like a sofa chill area while someone's doing some cooking or doing something else. Um, it also makes it pack, pack it away easier where I could just fold up the two outer panels to put um, the bed in and stuff back in and then fold up the middle panel. And also the middle panel I could fold down when I was here and there's an extra bit of work top whilst I'm working at the kitchen. So quite a few different, I think it's quite a versatile um, bed design. Here is going to be a fixed panel to stop, um, not this far out, probably about as far as the lights, to stop the bed in falling out and towards the back and do something slightly a bit differently. So let's get building. Just for reference where when these panels are in the up position this is just a bit of tin which happens to fit. They're going to be just slightly further back than the lights, so you still get the nice light from the downward lighting. And then when they fold down, they rest on the other side. And more importantly, they're resting on the solid um, beam there and not the overhang of the, the worktop, which is important. Other advantages, if I'm lazy, um, I could leave it down and use it as a temporary garage if I'm moving something particularly big or have an extra stuff for a little while. So I, it gives me the versatility to have the bed completely down and keep it down if I want, uh, but also having it up and having that extra space. Right, so first thing I need to do is to make my worktop here. I've just done a little template for the awkward corner they're going to match the same way I've done this corner. I'm not using this um, oak because it's well exp expensive and heavy and a bit unnecessary when the bed's going to cover most of it so I'm going to do something a bit different. So wood wise uh, it's all got the sort of cabinet top and all of the bed itself is going to be made from 18 mil ply but this is poplar core uh, with a far eastern sort of hardwood finish on which is a bit crap. 
um, but it was cheap, it was about £34 per 18mm sheet of poplar ply. The reason we've gone for poplar is uh, it's a lot lighter and since we're using some big sheets I think better just to have that sort of 25% weight saving over sort of conventional ply. Uh, but the finish of it, I do pay for that being a bit cheaper. Normally poplar is quite a lot more expensive. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you. It's the surface finish. It's actually just really quite a crappy thin. Because this line is slightly not straight, I'm just going to take a few mil off with the uh, flush trim bit router. Right, next job. Jigsaw out the well, the area I need to jigsaw out. The wood top on here was actually the old um, one of the old tables in my old van. Guess we can temporarily put the uh, do a test fit of the new worktop. Sorry, go on, sorry, camera. Pretty happy with the uh, first fit. The important bit works quite well. So I guess it's going to be the finishing is the next bit. I'm going to bevel the edges a bit like this. Which has just got a just got a little rounding to the edge of it. Same for here, which is more is going to eliminate chipping. So I'll just do it on this edge and this edge, and then it's going to be figuring out how I want to finish it. Right, as you can probably see, because I generally lack the ability to cut straight lines with a skill saw, and I don't have a table saw, I've been doing these pieces with the jigsaw by hand because it's quite a quick way. Uh, obviously it leaves not a straight line so I've been making them about 5mm larger and then I'm just using the router and, a, and a, a known straight edge to actually finish off the cut and it gives me a nicer finish on the end and actually straightens it all up. Right, three panels cut. They are going to sit way further back behind this light but I've just got on pop up properly at the sizes. So when I put the little hinge you can see there, just the spacing, it's going to knock, this is really terrible, it's going to knock a centimetre off this which will make it fit and the angle on here is going to be a centimetre off one corner and to five mil on the other and that should give me a nice, well it should fit nicely in the gap then. So I'm just going to give the edge of this a bevel, uh, mainly so just to stop chipping on it since it's plywood. We'll just do the underside first so I can get an idea of what it looks like. Well it's definitely going to show off that it's plywood. So yesterday's work was just Peppering on the bed panels I cut, sanded them all, and then because it's ply and it's going to be pa painted, and I don't want all those layers appearing on the edge. I've just gone over the entirety of the edge with filler, and I'm about to sand that flat, and that should be a nice, hopefully, a nice flat painted finish. A nice, decent flat edge. All right, down to do the other ones now. Oh. So, this is the sort of subframe for what the top's going on. Uh, the way I'm just going to mount it is going to pre-drill a few holes in here and then just screw up through these supporting timbers into the 18mm ply which is going to make the base below. Right, so I'm just going to pre-drill some holes I, just to make my life easier basically opposed to trying to screw up through. So I am doing this in a slightly different way than I did this worktop where I did sort of a, it's a floating mount. So because this is sort of an oak butcher's block and the wood's all lying in the same grain that there is quite a bit of expansion and contraction which can happen on the wood since this side is actually ply and that's a that's a mesh of different grain ways on all the different layers um, that isn't really an issue so I'm just going to sort of fix mount it instead 
this is a lot lighter <laughs> than the oak on the other side. If I'd known how good it was going to turn out, I might have uh, just gone for the same wood on the other side. Right, so I want to get this all nicely in a line and same at each end. So let's have a look. Right, that I believe is exactly where I want it. Let me make sure the door closes still. So next up is to start getting the screws in. I'm just going to leave the two middle ones so it remains square. And then after that, I'll just whack in all the other ones. I'm just going to use some 40 mil screws because the battens in there are 20 something. And the woods, uh, so they're maybe like 25 battens and then this is 18 mil, so 40 mil. Should give a nice amount of purchase all the way through the wood without, well, going through the work surface at the top. Right, one in, let's just double check that it didn't move too much. 16 millimeters. 16 millimeters. Yep, all right, let's get the other one in. Right, two in, more to go. Worked up in. That's the easy bit done now, it's figuring out all of the sizes of measurements for the actual bed panels. Right, workshop's in, now time to get to the sort of complicated-ish, figuring out the bracket location. So for the hinges, I'm gonna use, um, I think it's called piano hinge or continuous hinge. I can just cut it down to the size I need for each of the panels. Like so, just do it with a pair of tin snips. Um, 20 quid from screw fix for a pack of 10 and uh, one meter lengths. I'm only gonna need a few, but it was quite cheap for the pack. And I just need to figure out basically where to mount them. So I'm gonna go for 16 centimeters back from the edge. Okay. So, um, system works at a minute. Right, mounted those two. Um, I've just got them temporarily fitted because they're going to come out again. This one, uh, I, want to, I want to get those in so I knew the exact size for this one so I could then just figure out the small amount I'm going to trim off just so it fits the, fits the sink profile um, quite nicely but still is supported by where the actual structural beam is underneath here and not just on the edge of the, the work surface. So I can take that out now, trim that up and get this last bit fitted. I'm going to have to redo the bevel ledge again. Right, a couple of hours of test fitting later on. This is the fixed panel which is going to get screwed and that's going to have um, my monitor sort of like TV slash to be sort of on an arm and get mounted to here. And then the four bed panels, they're all temporary mounted because they still need painting. But to come up and sort of sit in there, the other ones I'm not going to be able to do one handed at the moment because they're not screwed in properly. So I think I'm going to do the outside of these in the blue, which you've got elsewhere, and then probably go for the inside. Um, the same sort of brown we've got here. I think that's going to be a good combination. I quite like the idea of how they're set up because I could have this one down or the end one down and have like a little extra work surface if I wanted. Right, so it's time to disassemble all of this and well, get it all painted and then come back. And with the magic of editing, um, they're all painted and mounted. So. As you sort of saw last time, they were lying on there and I've just put piano hinges in, all screwed on along there. And you may have also noticed this panel here, it's got all the bedding falling out this way. 
and that nicely marries up to there. A little cut out here just so when it's down the doesn't interact with the sink. But I figure out the retaining system now for this, but what I quite like is I'm going to be able to work here and say have the middle one down and use it as an extra work surface. So to treat these, these are going to get the same sort of oil that these have got on them. So hopefully match them up and this is the exact same sheet of wood this is from, so they are going to look similar colours when they're actually finished. Uh, a minute, I've got any systems to actually easily show you what's going on. But, uh, my monitor arrived and this is what's going to be sort of my main TV in the van so I could have my... I'm not really going to use it as a, as a desk as such because I'm going to be pretty sitting there with a table working on my laptop but this would be able to have like a fire, Amazon Fire Stick or my Apple TV or my Xbox connected up to it if I want to use it and um, this is still in the testing phase but a nice arm um, 27, 28 inch uh, IPS display. Tested it last night with an Apple TV and that running and the Apple TV only used 3.7 amps. I think that's about, it's like 41 watt. So nothing really at all considering the size of my battery back and how much you'd be realistically using it. And it's 4K as well, which is nice. And when it's in travel mode, just put the arm down. So I'm trying to do this one handed. It nicely folds into that recess when it's in travel mode. I'll probably put a bungee cord going between that to hold it in place. And then when the bed is in the up position, the mattresses will sort of hold that in as well. So it's nicely a system to store it away. You generally are going to only be able to have that TV out when you've got the, um, the bed out, but that's totally fine because that's probably when I'm going to be using it is when I'm in bed. And then the last panel, which needs a little bit of tweaking, and some careful geometry. It gets a little bit stuck there, I've got to trim that edge off. Um, fits there, I think the overall... <sighs> See if I can get all of these panels up and show you what it looks like. When, these are all gonna be flat, but when they're away, I actually quite like how is all going to look they're all going to be flat i will have something on this panel as well so the next job is to figure out how to get all these panels to stay up when i'm not using them so i uh, just had some spare heavy heavy duty magnets which i've just put up i don't know if i'll do these for the final version or i might support it with more of a physical lock than just magnets but the single magnets alone do a good job of just retaining them at least stopping the shaking so oh god they're quite strong i might get some more of those uh, that's going to pretty happy how that's going to work out. Right, so that is all the panels put in. Still just the magnets at the minute. Um, but they are actually a reasonable amount of work to get them off. the bed. This is, needs to get a quick sand and then oil it as well so it's all the same colour as this. But so far I've still got one magnet. I might put a magnet either side and then maybe a physical latch as well. Pretty happy with that. I'll put something on this face to break up the big blue as well. And I'm pretty much going to end the video here because it's starting to drag on and it's getting quite long in the editing stage so I'm going to make it into a two part. So I've got most of the physical building part of the bed done, the actual sort of mechanism and how it works. And the next episode I'm going to sort of sort out the mattresses and how the actual bed functions because so far you've just seen a bunch of panels going up and down. Um, figure out the locking mechanism and how I keep it up and a bunch of the other bits and bobs. So if you've enjoyed this video feel free to subscribe, if you've liked it leave me a thumbs up. Uh, comment as well, always helpful. If you have any questions about it, um, shoot me over some questions over on Instagram. It's easy, easier for me to pick them up there. And yeah, thank you very much. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.